You know we're gonna have to take away that bone. She is just like chewing piece? loudly. She's coming right behind you. She's probably thinking, how about I take your coffee and toss it outside and see what happens. I think that she handles taking away the bone better than you handle taking oh, away the I, coffee. Oh, I know that's true. Whoever came up with that expression, like a dog with a bone, didn't know a Rachel with a coffee. They would have changed that expression. Welcome to day six of beef butter, bacon and egg and keto chow. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we have twinsy mugs, you'll be alerted to it. We should cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Thursday. Hope everybody's having a good Thursday right now. These have become my favorite mugs, not just because they're Harry Potter, because we love Harry Potter, but because they're the same size and therefore we get the an same equal amount. amount of coffee. And the two mugs combined actually completely get filled up by one pot of coffee. So when it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. Like this was the whole pot, none left. We're really good. Good to the last drop. So uh, it is Thursday and uh, today is a, a at home day. It's a creative we have, day. We have work to do. I have videos to edit. Lots I need of to writing. start actually working on the next series for kids ministry. We've got a busy couple weeks coming up. Next week, our good friends Chris and Miriam are coming Yay! into town. They're coming in for low carb boca, but they're coming in early and we're hijacking them. We're hijacking them. We're gonna yep. spend some time with them. I think we're going up to Universal Studios. I'm sure they're at home going, I cannot wait to get out of these ridiculously cold, snowy temperatures right. in Utah. Are they ready for us though? Well, the last time they were here, they were in June. And it was really hot and muggy and rainy. So coming in January to South Florida, Still this is the best time to come though, because the temperatures can be like very weird. Like one day it could be 50 and next day it can be 80. But even when it's 80 in January here, it's, drier. it's, it's comfortable. I mean, we still have humidity, but it's not as bad. And the nights are usually a little bit cooler. That's probably true, but I still think it's like we really weird mm -hmm. to come out of freezing temperatures and snow. I mean, he was like plowing seven inches of snow the other day. Right. And then come here and be like, yeah, it's 80 degrees. I hope you brought a tank top. So we're having some breakfast. Uh, so what we're having is just a couple of eggs, a couple of slices of homemade bacon. I'm looking for a really good meat slicer. We were actually at Bass Pro Shops yesterday and I was looking at them, but I just can't pull the trigger on like a $250 meat slicer yeah. right now. But the one we have, we got off of Amazon. It's okay, but it, it's you can't fit the bacon in there and um, it, it gets like jammed up easy. I'd love to find a good one. I keep looking on OfferUp hoping some restaurant is closing. Not that I want a restaurant to close, but you know that somebody is, crumbling. somebody is getting rid of a really good one. If you've got a really, really good one that's powerful, that can slice through bacon like butter, let us know down in the comment section. Uh, in our coffee, uh, no keto chow because last night I did not have a keto chow creamy. I was I was pretty satisfied with dinner, but I might want one tonight. And since we're only allowing ourselves one keto chow up to one keto chow per day, want to save it? I didn't want to waste it on our coffee. So our coffee is uh, one egg split between the two of us, and we each have a tablespoon of butter. Um, no bread today because I made a loaf of bread yesterday. It just it. Something wasn't right about it. So if you saw the vlog that we put up the other day, by the time you see this, it's the other day. It's the one that says like day three. Um, I talked about putting egg on the top and I think I put too much on it and it was like very eggy. It was almost like eating egg. Now that step is completely optional. You can also just use egg white 
And yeah. again, if you don't mind allulose, I mean, sometimes I'll put a little bit in. I never have put more than a tablespoon of allulose. The allulose just gives you that browner top. Um, but you don't have to do that egg wash. So I, I would probably make it without the egg wash first. See how because you like it. it can make it eggy if you put too much on top. I just wanted to clarify that. Too eggy for Joe and Rachel? Yeah, well. So the one thing I am going to do today or we are going to do today because we're going to we're going to spend the day working on videos and I know you want to write Fearless Friday. Got a lot of writing. To um, do. We actually have this coming Saturday. We have uh our Patreon and channel member live stream. I'm yeah, excited about that. Me too. Um, but I got to catch up on emails. I'm like a week behind on emails. And I'm getting better at like ones that I see. I may open it up and go, hey, that needs to answer. Going back and marking it as unread. Because that's what happens with me. So if you send us an email, sometimes I'll read it. And I'll be like, oh, I need to respond to it. But I'm out in the car or something like that. And... I need to respond at home, right? This bacon. And you like that, huh? Oh my goodness. Um, and what happens is, is I forget to mark it as unread and then it gets buried. So I apologize. So if we don't answer an email, you can always try sending it to us again. Uh, but I got a surprise for you. What is the surprise? You're going to love this. Am I though? I figure we can have a, a, a tiny, like, little date morning because we do have our Patreon, uh, not our Patreon, our regular weekly live stream tonight. Right. right. I think we should go down to the scuba shop. Why not? Why not? <laughs> You're looking like, I don't like this idea. If we get fitted for stuff, it's going to make it way more real. Well, we have to take your mask down there because, again, they were going to make sure your mask fits and if not, exchange it out for a different one. We also need to have him check the booties for your flippers. And then you can see where you're going to learn how to scuba dive. You're going to have someone check my booty? Your, <laughs> your booties for your flippers. All right. Are you ready to go to the scuba store? Oh, am I ready? Yes. I am ready for an excursion, but I'm also a little nervous that we are going to be one more step closer to actually doing this. Somebody made a comment when we were talking about it on the Christmas vlog and said, Rachel, you're going to end up liking it so much, you'll probably be the last person to come up. Ah, I hope that. I hope that that, that will be the case. Um, I was definitely hesitant to paddleboard. I thought it was going to be a huge waste of money that we were never going to be able to do. And I was completely wrong. So I will be happy to be wrong again. Um, I'm more hopeful with this adventure than I was paddle boarding. I'm just scared. As soon as you get certified, we're going to book a campsite at John Penna Camp, Coral Reef State Park, so we can go scuba diving. Tabitha, now we know how much mommy loves you because she's letting you in her she shed. It's a girls only club, but she is my writing muse, <laughs> so she should be in here. Do you feel more comfortable now? I do because we're surrounded by people who know what they're we're doing. Gonna <laughs> we're gonna have fun. <laughs> Guaranteed fun. Is, is <laughs> okay, so I'm 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 excited because I feel like everybody here really knows what they're doing. <laughs> and just have fun. So Anthony got a vinyl record player for Christmas. He did. And he's enjoying it. And he actually likes some of the music that we listened to when we were Who kids. Knew? So we're going to stop at an old record store and kind of see if we can find any music that he would like. This reminds me when I was a teenager and I would just sit for hours in record stores yeah. and look for different vinyl albums. Same here. Look, a sealed copy of Desperado. I love the Eagles. I love them too. What'd you get? I got a little bit of everything. They have actually like old soundtracks from different old movies. And I thought one of the American Graffiti movies would be a good one for him to kind of wet his whistle with some of the old music. I mean, I would love to push Janis Joplin like really hard or The Who or Temple of the Dog or other, you know, bands that I listened to growing up. But, um, you know, we want to ease him into it and see like, what's his sound? They didn't have any albums that I listened to when I was a kid, like no Grateful Dead, uh, no Motley Crue, 
Creedence Clearwater Revival, none of that stuff. They didn't have anything that I listened to. They didn't even have any Billy Joel. I guess I listened to good music. That's what I'm going to take from that, that none of that out. stuff is available because everybody's keeping it because it's good music. Yeah, I was looking for like some U2 and Hendrix. And no that sort U2. Of, not, none of that here. So we'll just keep looking. But it's a nice kind of adventure and a way for us when we go to these local record stores to kind of like remember our childhood. We are going to Rachel's favorite place. A thrift store. So we are down here in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Where we're, we never come. We're rarely here. So before we jump on I-95, we're going to go into the Salvation Army Superstore because it's big. We have bought a lot of furniture in this store over the we years. We have. I mean, because it's like you get 50% off of 130 bucks. I mean, this is how you outfit your house. I have a surprise for you. You do? Yep. What is the surprise? We already tried to get fitted for scuba stuff. That was shock enough. I'm not going to tell you. You're just going to have to wait and see. I'll tell you what. I don't need too many more surprises today because Why? going in the Salvation Army and they want $10 for a shirt? What are they smoking? It's supposed to be cheap at the thrift store. My thrift store by my house is way cheaper than this. They really didn't have anything there. Right? Nothing. I, I seem to remember that Salvation Army being a lot nicer with a nicer variety, and I also remember it being a lot cleaner than it was. Yeah, I was looking for a table runner that we could use in the studio, and the only one I found looked like it was involved in a crime scene. Are we going to the movies? No. What are we doing? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I know what we're doing now. Texas Day Brazil, baby. So on Black Friday, I bought some Texas Day Brazil gift cards because they were doing a deal where you got $25 bonus cards if uh, you bought a $100 card. And that's the only way we go out to eat is when we can buy a gift card that gives us a bonus. And the $25 gift cards are only good Monday through Thursday. And uh, if you come here before 3.30 from Wednesday to Saturday, it's only 30 bucks. Good deal. So we're gonna go there and then all the food that I've got defrosted, that'll be good for tomorrow. Cause actually the flank steak that I was defrosting wasn't defrosted yet. But since we have the live stream tonight, I won't have to go home and cook. We can treat ourselves. We haven't been out to eat for a long time. And it is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And eat a whole bunch of beef. And they have lamb. We just can't have any chicken. So we're getting started with some bacon. You have to make sure that they don't candy the bacon. Some of the different, you know, Brazilian steakhouses candy the bacon, but we're we're safe here. So we've got some bacon and also some salami. First thing they brought us was Brazilian sausage. It's made with beef and pork. No chicken, so we can eat it. Well, it looks like we're having flank steak after all. It's just Joe didn't have to cook it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Debbie. Grab it. <laughs> I'm hitting the wall. You're hitting the wall early. Yeah. I'm hitting the wall early, but it's like I can't walk away from like the perfectly charred fats. There's something magical about perfectly cooked charred fat that it's just like it tastes so delicious. I want to push past the pain to eat more of it. I know why I'm you're hitting sure. the wall though. You know why you're hitting the wall? What? Because you don't have Bronson or Chris here to challenge There's you. There's no challenge. It's just There's Joe. There's no challenge. It's me and, and I'm never going to be able to eat as much as you can. Uh, a delicious meat-filled belly, but I'm smelling a cigar. So that, that's not, I want to like go back and smell some more of the beef. That was really good, but I really feel like we ate a lot. I'm glad we came for lunch because yes. I don't think we would have gotten our money's worth for a dinner thing. No, I think that we are turning into lightweights. I never thought I would believe that. And Lord knows we get enough people saying Rachel eats too much and she's a gluttonous pig, but like, I don't eat as much as I used to. Can the, I get that? Like a that is a topic for when up. we are not walking. Yeah. So it was funny though, because again, we used gift cards and you're allowed to use one like bonus card. We had a $25 bonus card. So we said, we're gonna put the $25 on there and put the balance on the other gift card. And he was like, okay, you can't put the tip on the gift card, which I'm fine yeah. with but neither one of us are carrying cash. I was like, what is cash? So he goes, okay, I have to put one penny, not on the gift card so that you can put Pay the tip the on card. the credit card. I just thought that was interesting, but uh, really good service. 
Awesome. I love the fact that our waiter right off the beginning, just the guy who brings the water yes. and stuff that who seated us, he was like, hey, like, is there anything you want? How do you want your meat? So I make sure that like, we're not bringing you well done meat. Do you meat. have any dietary restrictions? And then uh, one of the guys who were walking around with all the meat said, like, I noticed you're not having pork. Very similar to our experience in Las Vegas. Yes. And he was like, so what can I bring you? You tell me what you want and I'm gonna go to the kitchen. And so at the one point, we started only getting bacana. Yeah. Since we're at the Sawgrass Mall, because that's where Texas Day Brazil is, Might we figured well. we'll, we'll walk, walk around a little bit, not to go shopping, but to kind of like get ourselves moving and out of the food coma. So we don't go to sleep on the way home. The cool part is, is every time Rachel walks away from me, usually I have to like search an entire store. And now I can hear her like three stores away because she's wearing some kind of silly bells around her ankle. Well, I actually got this a couple of years ago from a subscriber and I like thinking that if I meet somebody new, I'm so happy to see them that I'll meet them with bells on. Wow, now I have seen it all officially. Here is a cake ATM machine. <laughs> I would like to propose a bacon ATM machine or a meat cookie ATM machine. Look, well, look who it's from. It's from Buddy. He's the cake boss. I need a bacon boss. Are you rearranging things? One of these things is not like the other ones. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Good morning. Unplanned today. today vlog. Yeah, we we had the Thursday night live stream and just decided like, oh, uh, it, was, it was just a long day. You know, we didn't like do a whole bunch of like work work, but it was just a long day. We were and ready for night night. It was time to go to bed. And I mean, I tried to watch an episode of Sopranos and I fell asleep halfway through one episode. We did watch that a couple work. of episodes of dog shows. Read all about it. We like watching those things. I do. It's what's really good is is a lot of times we watch them and I'm like, yep, not a dog I would ever want to have. Right? <laughs> I pretty much I do not think any of the terriers would be a good match for us. No. No. I just don't think so. No, I'm a sporting dog kind of person. Or Prove like, me wrong. I'm, I'm a hunting dog, like Labrador retrievers, cocker spaniels, things like that. It's so. interesting though. I love hearing about these animals because it's it's a dog. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. But there's so many varieties and they all do something cool and different. It's really cool when you start learning the history of them. I mean, we don't like, expect this from from elephants. No. But when you find out like where they came from and, this is mine. and like we were watching, it's both of us. Like we were watching the one on the Jack Russell Terrier last night. And like that was like super interesting to yeah. find out their history and and how he even came about and that kind of stuff. So I have a little bit more of a serious topic that I wanted to talk about this morning. So yesterday when we were at lunch, we started talking about some of the comments that come in about being gluttonous and um, you eat too much. I can't understand why you can sit down and eat a pound of beef. Yeah. You also have to understand a lot of times that we're only eating one or two meals and it's very important to get the protein in. And some people like Rachel can eat a lot in a sitting. There's other people like me that I can't. A lot of times you're going to see what we're eating and you know, we don't eat the entire vlog. I'm not going to finish my dinner on vlog cause that would be boring. But there's a lot of times where you see what I have and I eat maybe half of it and then put it away and eat it like 30 minutes or an hour later. I, don't really have that ability to be able to eat a lot in a sitting, whereas Rachel does. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of shaming comments or attempted shaming because it doesn't shame me anymore. Right. Like, I got spoiler alerts. My, my skin is starting to get thicker and thicker as we move on in our keto journey because I know no matter what, we need to be in this space. Right. We need to be in this keto space and I need to put my big girl panties on and be willing to, to take the negative comments because we might be able to help somebody out right. there. And so it's worth it to me if somebody kind of wants to give me a verbal punch right. in order for us to be here for somebody who truly needs us. But we do get a lot of comments where people are absolutely disgusted and outraged at my level of eating versus Joe's. Right. And my answer to that, my calm answer, not my like, hey. Right. My calm answer is 
don't look at us as man and woman. Look at us as individuals. Right. Individuals are different. You're going to see a guy in your travels in life that can put food away, and you're going to see girls in your life that can put food away. It's mm -hmm. just person to person. It doesn't mean that I'm less of a woman or he's less of a man because sometimes, you know, it gets attached to our gender. A guy should really be able to eat a ton of hearty breakfast and a girl should not be able to eat anything. So if you're a girl or a guy that eats a little bit in a sitting or, to, or eats a little bit in a day even. It, like let's say you can't eat across an entire day what I can eat in a meal. It's okay. You don't have to be angry at me. I don't have to be angry at you. It's just by the individual. Yeah. And this, what I wanted to talk about wasn't really so much about the comments. I didn't, I didn't want to bring this up to complain like, I can't believe these yeah. comments. Because there have also been comments where people have said, Rachel, Thank you. Thank you for making me not feel weird because I can eat more than my husband. Right. What I wanted to talk about is the pro I think a lot of this comes from society. Yeah. Right. So you had a period of time where society was like, women need to look like a stick. They need to look like a Barbie doll, an unrealistic thing. Yeah. Right. And I think that society has kind of put onto women that, and I know I'm a man, but this, these are the thoughts that were going through my head. I think society's put on to, to you know, like women's heads that you shouldn't eat in front of your spouse or your boyfriend. Like you've got to be petite and if they see you eat yeah. and if you're a pound overweight, they're going to be like, that's why you're heavy. But the bottom line is, is I think that in the end, that causes a lot of closet eating. Oh, absolutely. I was one of those girls that would eat on a date a little tiny bit like oh i'm completely stuffed with this amount of food when really y'all know i eat this amount of food so i would come home from a date or even out with friends because a group of girls together shouldn't be able to eat a plate of food right like right. i mean we should all be eating little tiny bits of food um but i would come home or on the way home from something and go through the drive through and eat. Instead of, I wish, if I could go back and talk to Rachel, say just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be yourself, eat, eat the right food obviously, I didn't know what the right food was back then. Eat the proper human diet, eat your amount of food, and show it, put it out on the table, because if a guy's gonna be like, ah, on a date with you, you don't want to be with them anyway. You don't want to be with them anyway because what happens is when you bring that into like let's say you're you're married or living together and now you're cohabitating, now where do you go when you want to hide your eating? The closet. Yeah, the closet. Like right? actually the closet. In my case, the bathroom. Right. Because you want them to think, hey, I, I haven't lied about myself or anything else, because I mean sometimes they always say you know, you get to know each other once you're together, living together, and it's like, gosh, I'm so surprised and disappointed. Not that you ate a lot, but that you portrayed yourself as somebody who didn't need a thing, and now you're much higher maintenance than I thought you were. And I don't, this doesn't just apply to women, too, because I can tell you I had issues with this. I, I can, like, look back now. I couldn't see this back then. Yeah. But one of the things that caused me, even though I was overweight when I was a kid, I ballooned up when I went off to college because I decided that in my own mind, all of the things that we didn't eat in my house, I'm now going to eat. Right. And, you know, so we, we didn't get sugared cereals when I was growing up. Now, we were pushed oatmeal and stuff like that. And unfortunately, again, when you know better, you do better. My parents didn't know. I grew up in the time of fat is evil, right. right? So, but when I went off to college, it was how much sugared cereal, how much of the jarred tomato sauce, um, how much fast food, because we didn't eat fast food when yeah. I was a kid. And I gorged myself on that. 
And what for me, what it ended up doing, and Rachel tell you, like one of the reasons that I'm not big into going out to eat, now I've fixed this issue in my head, but for a long time, I didn't want to go out to eat because I didn't want people in public to see the fat guy eat. I didn't want to know that that person that's sitting at the table over there was looking going, can you believe, no wonder that guy's fat. How, look at how much food that guy's eating. I would go grocery shopping at two o'clock in the morning at a 24 hour store so that nobody saw me putting the Twinkies into the cart, right? And I would try to go to self checkout if they had it. So I was closet hiding this stuff as well. And what I wanna encourage you to do is, if you can eat a lot of food, stick to whole foods, stick to beef, butter, bacon, egg, or carnivore, or whatever, and eat until you're satiated. And don't worry about the stigmatism that you shouldn't eat that much. And what you're going to find is you won't be able, if you stick to just these whole foods, you won't be able to eat as much as you think you can or as you wait. But when, when we take that away from us and say like, you can have as much as you want, as Rachel discovered the first it time really on Beef Butter Bacon Egg, it was all of a sudden like, oh, well, I really don't want as much as I thought I wanted. Well, and before we move on from the subject, because I think this is very important, I just wanted to mention one thing as your wife that I noticed, because again, the girls aren't supposed to eat anything. Uh-oh, here I go. I feel like if you closet ate anything in our marriage, it was the foods that you would associate with weakness. Mm -hmm. I never really saw you eat in front of me candy sort of things, sweetened the desserts, an extra roll or bread or that sort of thing. So I was in the middle of the night when you were sleeping. So I think that there is a stigma for guys that like, yes, you can have a hearty plate of breakfast, but if you have any weakness of sugar or like dessert type of things or extra bread, now that is a sign of weakness. Only women have to make that hard choice about dessert. A guy like doesn't, you know, he's strong and doesn't need anything. And so I, I think that is interesting. We were closet eating everything and you were closet eating like mm -hmm. mostly things that you would say is like the extras. Yeah, so again, if you can eat more than some other people, stick to your whole foods, don't worry about it. And as we continue to say, you need to do what's sustainable for you. Yes. One of the reasons diets, all diets, any diet, no matter what its name is. You know why diets don't work? Because they're restrictive. Yeah. And the second you, in your mind, view something as, I can't have this. Immediate rebellion. Immediately, you're going to begin to rebel. You may get away with it for a week. You may do two weeks. You may do three weeks. Yeah. But eventually, you're going to be like, I want what I can't have, right? What do they say? Like, when you tell a child they can't do it, what's the first thing they want to do when you turn your back? Do that. They want to do that. And so, when you free yourself and be like, I can have as much food. If you feel you're eating too much, do what Dr. Silas talks about with like sequential eating where... I have four slices of bacon. I'm going to put two on my plate and I'm going to put two over there. Yeah. And when I'm done with this, if I want more, I have to get up and go over there or I have to reach over there. But it's not, there's four slices of bacon on my plate, so I have to clean my plate. Do what's sustainable for you. So we finally got the car back. I just spent two hours sitting at the dealership. Was that super fun? It was annoying. The guy called us last night and said, hey, um, I want to let you know your battery is about dead and you're having some issues with it. And I'm like, okay, well, how much is a battery? And he's like, 400 bucks. And I'm like, I'll do it on my own. And he's like, you may not want to do that because it could fry the whole car's computer system. So I said, I'm still going to look into it. So I did start doing some researching and found out that, yeah, when you disconnect the battery on a 2018 Volkswagen Tijuana, um, the entire computer needs to be reset. Yeah. And if you do it at home, the warranty won't cover your towing it back up. Of course. So I also found out the battery alone is $300. So uh, I ended up calling him back saying, okay, go ahead and do it. He gave us a discount, found out that our Volkswagen dealership gets 15% off if you have a Costco membership. They need to tell you those things up front, right? Nobody tells you those things up front. It's like Why a lot of people- you think that a Costco membership will get you a deal on mechanic work. Well, a lot of people don't know that Costco memberships also will get you the best price on renting a car. 
So you just have to know these things. Costco, we get a discount on our insurance from Geico because we have a Costco membership. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he tells me the car's going to be ready around 1 o'clock. I get up there, and the computer wasn't accepting the programming after changing the battery. So it took two hours for them to get it to go. I'm so sorry. But I did go pick up mail. But I am now very hungry. Me too. I'm annoyed. I'm sorry. And we're going to go eat. We're going to go ahead and cook dinner, and tonight's going to be very simple. It's going to be a bacon and ground beef hash. So I'm going to cook everything on the electric Blackstone. And this is probably going to be enough for a couple of days. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a pound of bacon. I'm using bacon ends. These are like leftovers from making our own bacon. They're like the end pieces. We're going to go ahead and brown these up and get them all cooked. And then we're going to add a bunch of ground beef to it. Okay, bacon is done. So we're gonna go ahead now and take this and we're gonna transfer it to a plate. And what I'm gonna do is simply brown up all this ground beef in the bacon grease. Now this is the ground beef that came from the whole share of beef that we bought. So it is a little bit leaner at about 90-10. So the bacon grease will add a little bit of fat and a lot of flavor. Now, as this is cooking down, I'm going to add a little bit of Redmond, salt to taste, and let it keep cooking. So now that the ground beef is almost cooked, I'm going to take a serving of the Keto Chow Spicy Taco. I'm going to go ahead and mix the Spicy Taco Keto Chow throughout all of the beef. Now, you can also use the tomato basil flavor. Okay, now that everything is incorporated, we're going to go ahead and add the bacon back in and mix everything together. One thing you want to do is try to get all of that grease mixed back in because the keto chow will absorb it all and that's going to give you a lot of flavor. Ooh, does this look beautiful. This was worth the wait. Ugh. I waited patiently for that car all day. <laughs> You were more patient than me because I was able to like go exercise and play with Tabitha and visit with my mom and visit with Caleb and the whole while you're just sitting there waiting for the car. I got to go through Facebook. That was fun. Move over. We're not center. Sorry. So uh, simple dinner. Simple but elegant. We're having a ground beef scramble. Mm. So I already showed them what this is. But what this is is... There's, there's actually more in the fridge because there's more than enough food. But well, thank you. Two For pounds of ground beef, mm -hmm. a pound of bacon. Now, I used bacon Can't ends because we make our own bacon. But if you don't have bacon ends, that's fine. Just take a pound of regular bacon, chop it up, and cook it up. Don't overcook it. You want to have some of this, this chewy fat on there. It, it kind of reminds me of... Remember you used to get cans of pork and beans right pork and, you, and beans you'd get those little chunks of fat as a kid i hated that but then when you become an adult you're like mm. oh that's all the flavor that's right? a little flavor burst right there mm -hmm. and then i cooked all that up uh-huh and then mixed in a serving of the keto chow spicy taco and it adds flavor but honestly it's not that spicy it's not like blow your no, face it's off it's not spicy, spicy at all now, if you want it spicy, you could actually add some more taco seasoning. We actually have a recipe. I'll leave a link for it yeah. down below to make your own taco seasoning without having all of the garbage, garbage. and crap that the store-bought ones have. And we just make a, a giant thing of it and put it in a little spice jar and keep it, you know, in the cabinet. I didn't add any to this, but this adds a lot of flavor. But what it does is after you're done cooking the ground beef, you know, you always have all that grease and the water and all that stuff. You put this in Why there. Why miss any of that? It sops it up, turns it into a gravy, brings a bunch of flavor. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that is a runny egg. Yes, I know, runny egg. But this it is becomes the a context. gravy over the yep. top of the ground beef. And then we're having one slice of the Maria Emmerich bread. And you'll see on this one, I did not add the egg on top. It still gets that light brown color in there. But right. I just love the texture that this one brings. And it's super easy I actually, for today's bread, usually I like to use egg whites that I've taken out and I let them sit on the counter for a while, come up to room temperature, I find they beat better. I don't have any cheap store-bought eggs. I only have the girls' eggs from the backyard. They're working hard. And about a half a dozen of uh, the, uh, what is the, the one, the Happy Egg Company. Yeah. 
and I'm not willing to take $5 a dozen eggs and make the bread with it. Now you're talking about a loaf of bread that costs you about $12. So since I didn't have any of that, I actually just used Maria Emmerich's new recipe of like the easiest wonder bread. I'm I will leave a link easy. for that over Rachel's head. And basically what it is, is instead of using 12 eggs and a, and uh, then one cup of the egg white powder, mm -hmm. you use one and a half cups of it. So, okay. but again, follow her recipe. But I did that and then at the end, after everything was all beat up to stiff peaks, I added my keto chow in because again, I like the texture that the keto chow brings and it makes it super simple. I know there's lots of egg white breads out there. Yeah. And they're all good. Uh, but for me, this is just nice and easy. It doesn't have a lot of added extra carbs and things like that. We were just talking about that in the chat during today's vlog premiere. Mm -hmm. About how everybody has a variation right. of this bread. And you find what's good for you. It's like Uno. Right. Every household has their own house rules, mm -hmm. you know, and what we have to be is like cool when we get together. I remember Caleb would get so frustrated when he brought his Uno cards to school because he'd want to play at lunch. And he was like, oh, I'm so angry that other people don't play the way that I play. And right. I'm like... Don't be upset about it. Everybody's got their own house rules. Try to come to a consensus if you're if you're meeting in a group. But when you're home and like you're just eating it, it doesn't matter who's right, right. about the right way to make the bread. Yeah, M Maria Emmerich just did such a good job coming up with this, and it, it is interesting to see people, you know, changing things up a mm -hmm. little bit to suit their palate or the texture that they want. Yeah. And I just, I love the base of her recipe. And a right. lot of times we make just the way she exactly makes it. Yeah. And you know, when we spoke with her and she was like, listen, you don't have to use a whole quarter of a cup or a half a cup of allulose. I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, you can use just like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of it, depending on how brown you want to get it. And a lot of times we make it like we are right now without allulose and and just do what you can do to make it for you. Sometimes being a rule follower by nature is is a upsetting thing because it's like, oh, we're allowed to change it. And she's like, yes, you're an adult man. Right. It's kind of like Dr. Barry saying, like, you, it's your house. Like right. you can do what you choose to do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. So we're gonna eat and then we'll come back and we'll open up all the mail I got from the post office. So tomorrow we're having flank steak, so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it tonight. Now since we are doing BBB and E, I'm not gonna marinate it because that would involve soy sauce and some other things. So we're just going to rub it down with a little bit of mustard and then put some Redmond seasoning on it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of mustard. I'm using a Dijon mustard. We're gonna rub this in and then coat each side with some of the Redmond's. And the mustard's pretty much just helping it stick. It'll, it will give a nice little flavor though. We'll go ahead and rub this in, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna put it over onto a like cooling rack over the top of a pan, stick this in the refrigerator, and let it sit overnight. Hello! What do we got? Well, we have, oh, I just, my thing just snapped. Hello. We just, uh, technical difficulties. Ah, uh, well, we have full billies. Uh-huh. And that now was good. we got mail. I got so excited. This is from our friend Paul, Paul Price. I'm just thinking like we're sitting in this position after eating. I feel like I look 20 pounds heavier. Yeah, we need, like, a, we need a better angle. Full belly. Yeah, we need a better but angle. You know what? You get all of us. I love it. What great penmanship you have, Paul. It's absolutely gorgeous. All the way from South Wales. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I know what it's past Christmas, gorgeous, but it came from Wales. Gorgeous card. It said, have a wonderful Christmas. The cat oh, is playing with something. Look, it's charity. Go away. Stop playing with that. It's like there's a, what is that? A wire tie hanging on oh the bottom gracious. of the tripod. Look at how gorgeous his penmanship is. To Joe and Rachel, I hope you have a blessed Christmas and the Lord really blesses you in 2022. Best wishes for the new year. Thank you so much for your support this year and for all your effort. God bless. Wow. Paul. Thank Paul, you very much. We Paul. feel the same way about you, young man. Thank I you so much. I want to open this. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
This is from Mary Jo. Hey, Mary Jo. Ow, I hurt myself. Don't I did something really you. stupid today. In excitement, I tried to pick up something like really quickly and I think I like tore something I or- I you didn't. Oh, Mary Jo, oh, did she just really? She's awesome. <laughs> Mary Jo! <laughs> This later. Oh my this gosh. is literally that. That is the best Christmas present ever. Mary Jo, that is the cutest thing wow. ever. Thank you so Thank you. much. Wow. That went, so when Anthony was a kid, a little kid, that was his favorite thing. He loved boxes. He would climb into any box. But he popped this. And but I'm not, I'm thinking about just like presents, right? Anthony would climb into any box. You gotta find and that picture. Close it up. And I think if I can find them, I'm gonna put it up here. One day we we're at the baseball field, and Anthony, we've talked about this, how he prayed that he wouldn't get big because he didn't want to go on roller coasters. And it worked. So even when he was like seven years old, he was still wearing a 5T. He just he actually went two years without growing an at inch. All. And then we finally went to him like, you need to stop. <laughs> Praying that you're gonna that stay you won't tiny. grow and then he shot up like you know like a weed but so yeah he would put himself in box and we were at the baseball field and he found a box and he literally stuffed himself into this box Reminds and then me of closed a cat, the lid right cats like to sit into really small things i remember buying a refrigerator and he would have so much fun it's like why are we buying toys again why are we buying all things? you need all he wanted was the box it's that's how I feel about this. Trying to get. Oh, there it goes. Just tear where you're supposed to tear, and you don't put your teeth on it. I'm gonna play with this later. Oh All wow! Night long in bed. Oh my gosh! It's another. That I believe is from Pam. Even nuttier. Thank you so much. Yeah, this that was is Pam. Awesome. Pam had sent us three, but Amazon sometimes Amazon doesn't let you put like who it's from. The first two were a huge hit on New Year's Eve, so I cannot wait to see yeah. how awesome this is. Thanks see it. so much. I am much. not reading this because like Rachel and balls and nuts. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. That was cool. Ooh. Try that. This says flux. It says, play this one with your youth group kids. We'll help them learn to read and follow instructions. This is from Aaron. Aaron, oh, thank wow. you so much. It's called Flux, the card game with ever-changing rules. How cool is this? Thank you guys we so love much. Card games, but we that, love card that games. That would be really good because yeah. so on Sundays... You know, the later services in the day, you have children of, you know, Volunteers. parents who are volunteering in the church. And so they've already gone through one service for kids ministry. So we're not going to make them go through more services. Right. So they have what we call kids lounge. And Rachel runs kids lounge. And, and our kids lounge isn't go in and play video games. It's we're going to do activities, maybe make crafts for parents. I was going to say we make crafts. We play with yarn. We play with Play-Doh, like all kinds of stuff like that. And they love card games and learning how to do different new card games. I remember when you started bringing in just like matchbox cars. And right. And just it's, let kids be kids. I think that sometimes kids like they get so involved in technology at home yeah. They forget about all the fun toys that we all grew up with. So I mean, we played Rachel's with stencils. Been reintroducing them to the toys that we played with. And yeah. I remember when you brought in yarn. Yes, they loved right? yarn because they never played with that at home. And we, you know, learned to knit some things and just use yarn, make pom poms. It's just, it's completely unique to them. It's right. like it's like you're in a to in the magic school bus all of a sudden because it's not something that they play with on the regular. I'll tell you what else they enjoy playing with. Marbles. Oh, marbles. Marbles. They love marbles and we have we put together things where um, they're putting the marbles through different tracks that they're creating. <laughs> also, magnet play. Oh. They like that. And we also do a lot where we have different rocks and shark teeth and we use magnifying glasses and look at specimens like you know, watching a frog go from tadpole to frog. We have scorpions and all kinds of things where they can see it and you put, you know, you can either put it under slides or we have it where it's encased 
different specimens, and we talk about that. It's just really fun. Cool. Well, I think that's going to end this vlog right here. Tomorrow is, uh, I don't know. Saturday. Saturday. We're going to probably just relax, edit some videos. Uh, do some different things like that. Tomorrow's dinner is flank steak, and we have the Patreon, and we have the Patreon YouTube channel member. Well, it'll be it'll be yeah. passed by the time this vlog yeah. comes but out. Yeah, I'm excited but, for it. Yeah, we always love that. But we also have on Tuesday the coaching call with Bronson for all our Patreon members. Yep. So I'm excited about that. So, well, that's going to be the end of today's vlog. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon that way. Every single time someone gets the perfect gift for Joe, you'll be alerted to Til it. Till next time. Bye.